All right, uh, math one, here is your video for 5.3 worksheet. Most of you got all this done in class, but I want to make sure um, you understand it. Go over again. Uh, let me zoom in here so we can get a good idea of what it's saying. All right, so I only selected a few problems because sometime, some, uh, in class I already did some of them. So I selected the ones that I did not talk about in class so we can solve it and compare answers. So here we go. It says, worksheet 5.3, it says determine whether each table represents a linear or an exponential function. So linear or exponential. So, and then if you actually read the detail hint, it says an exponential function, the x value um, has a common difference, all right? The x value has a common difference and the y value has a common ratio. Ratio is a fraction, not adding or subtracting. There's a fraction, okay? So let's see if the x values has a common difference. I'm just going to go to number two. You can do the other two. Okay, from one to a two, I just need to add a one. To get to a three, I just need to add a one. And to get to a four, I just need to add a one. So there is a common difference between the x values. It works. Now, is there a common ratio between the y values? I like to work the y values backwards. Negative 16 divided by negative 8, that is a positive 2. Negative 8 divided by a negative 4, that's also a positive 2. And negative 4 divided by a negative 2, that's also a positive 2. So yes, this is exponential. Okay. So on the x values, we check if it is increasing or decreasing by a certain number. And on the y values, we check for a fraction. I like to work backwards because I know I'll get a whole number, okay, most of the time. Check the number one and check the number three. We have done the same exact example in the previous worksheet, so that is the second time I'm showing you an example on how to check a table to see if it's exponential. Now let's take a look if you give me a situation, okay? I want you to use, this is where you show me some critical thinking. Is this gonna, the situation is gonna be linear or can I write this equation as an exponential? So a population of bacteria culture decreases. So you have to give me an initial amount, okay? So you have to give me some amount of bacteria. I'm gonna call that A. And then it's gonna decrease by half. So half I can show as 1 over 2, so there's my ratio, every 24 years. So I know I can write an equation that is going to be exponential. I can say y equals my initial amount of bacteria times my um, ratio of 1 half to the every year, okay, every 24 hours, sorry. So I can put a T or an X for the time, and that would be an exponential function, okay? Now, Sarah's fee decreases by $5 each time she visits the chiropractor. So think about that. Can I write that as an exponential, or is that just a linear? Is it going to be the same amount every time, okay? She's, he's not taking it to a power. I'm giving you a hint here. If I go to the top doctor and I pay $20, the next time I go, I'm going to pay 20, uh, instead of 20, I'm going to pay 15. And the next time I go, he lets me, he takes $5 off, I'm still going to pay 15. So Sarah's fee decreases by $5 each time she visits the chiropractor. So I think he's taking $5 every time, it's the same amount every single time, okay? So there's a hint here, the, uh, the amount that they're taking from her visit don't change. Here, if I take one half to um, the 24 hours power and, and then to uh, 48 hours and then so forth, it's gonna change that, okay? So I want you to put some thinking through here. I love discussing that in class with you guys. Uh, the value of Adrian baseball card collection has increased by 2% each year. So I have a time here, I have a rate, 2% is 0 0.02, and I have my initial amount of what my, the cards were, the cards were worth something, okay? So um, think about it. Can this be written as an exponential function? Let's find out, okay? So that's what I want you to think through, and some of you like, some of you did an awesome job of even trying to create an equation for it.
All right? It looks like that the 2% each year changes every year, right? 2% of something, and then next year is 2% of a different value. So it looks like things are going to be changing here. In comparison to uh, Sarah's fees here, they're only taking $5 every single time. It doesn't change. All right, now, which function has the greater value for the given value of x? I'm going to give you a value of x. I want you to plug it in and tell me what function is going to give you the highest value. If I had the bank that tells me y equals 4 times x plus 3 versus another bank that says every time you give me a money, some certain money, I'm going to multiply 4 times 3x. So if x equals 1, let's plug it in on the first equation. Okay? So that would be y equals 4 times 1 cubed. That means 1 times 1 times 1. 1 times itself 3 times, which is just 1. So 1 cubed is just 1. 1 times 4 is just 4. So on the first equation, we get a 4 as an answer. On the second equation, y equals 4 times 3 times x, and x is 1. Okay? 3 times 1 is 3, and then times 4 equals 7. So if you look here, in this case, we got a 7. In this other case, we got a 4. So which one gave you the highest value? We got this one for the y equals 3 times x. Okay? And then you're going to be doing the same exact thing here. Which function has the greatest value when I plug in an x, a 2 for x? So you're going to plug in a 2 here. You're going to have 3 times 7 squared. I want to know what value that is compared to... 3 times 2 to the 7th power, what is that going to be? Compared to 7 times 2 plus 3, what's that going to be? Compared to 7 times 3 to the 2nd power, what is that going to be? So I'm just replacing the x values with 2, and I want to find out which of these functions, which of these equations give me the highest value. I want you to calculate this because it's just calculator work. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look here in the back. Okay, very similar to what we've done in worksheet two. It says, state whether the equation represents an exponential function or a linear function. Exponential has a, a variable on the exponent, okay, an x or a y. And a linear, it's most of the time, is just y equals mx plus b. So take a look at number 10. What do you see that tells me that is an exponential function? There's an x on the exponent, so this is exponential. Okay, why? Because the x is the exponent. That's why. It's because the x is the exponent. Exponent. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now take a look at number twelve. F of x, which also means y, equals three x three times x plus four. So is that exponential? No, it's definitely not exponential. Is it linear? Yes, I see the slope right there, m times x, plus there's my b value. Okay, so this is linear. All right? So I hope you can use the same idea here. Could it be neither? Could it be neither? Not exponential nor linear? Of course it could be. If it does not have this pattern, of linear and it does not have the pattern of exponential then is neither okay all right I am skipping this two over here uh, we're gonna be doing in class and I want you to see it's very a lot of work to do this once to create a little table of values so we're not gonna do it today here in, in the video I want to help you with number 16 so Jonah invested a hundred dollar in an account he started with a hundred dollars for any t val for any year t so the t is representing how many years he's going to leave that hundred dollars in the account the balance is given by the function f of t equals 100 times 1.12 to the t power i'm going to write it bigger here f the function is in terms of the time equals his initial amount times, I'm going to open parentheses and put 112 to the t time, okay? So every year, I'm going to take the 112 to a power and then multiply times my $100. 
So Jonah created a table to see how, how his balance, how his money is going to grow in six years. Okay. So if I want to know what's going to happen in three years, I am going to plug in a three for T and I'm going to do it in my calculator. So I want you to see how I do that in this kind of calculator right here. Okay, clear? All right, so I'm going to do 100, open parenthesis, put 1.12, close the parenthesis. The little upside down V ta takes it to a power. And I want to see how much is going to be in three years, because that's the place that's blank for me to fill out. So put 3, and that equals... 140.4. I'm going to do whole number $140. So in three years, Jonah would have $140. What would happen in four years? So I'm going to do a different calculator in case you guys have a different calculator. With this different calculator over here, I first take the 1.12 to the fourth power. I use this button right here. Um, I use this button y to the x to take it to a higher to the to whatever power I want okay so in this calculator we work a little bit different we type the uh, rate 1.12 first 1.12 and then I push that button y to the x and then nothing changes it looks like nothing changed but I push that button y to the x and I'll take it to the fourth power fourth power and I'll push enter it gives me that number, 1.5735, blah, blah, blah. Now I can go ahead and finish it and multiply it times 100. That equals 157.3. I'm just going to write 157. So all I did was the calculator work. Let me do it again. I did 1.12. I'm going to take it to a power, so I push this button y to the x power. And I took it to the fourth power, because that's the fourth year, and I push enter. So all I did was taking 112 to the fourth power. Now I need to finish it by multiplying it times 100 equals 157. And then I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the five years and the six years. I want you to do it so you can see what values you get. And then you can answer, is the balance of the account represented by a linear function? or an exponential function. I told my students, you can either do the ratio of dividing 157 by 140, 140 by 125, 125 by 112, or you can just take a look at the equation they gave you. What kind of equation they gave you? They gave you an exponential equation because the exponent is a variable. So I know it's an exponential function. Why? Exponential function. And I'll tell you why. Because the variable, the variable is in the exponent. Uh, if you look at the equation, the variable, uh, the exponent is a variable. So I know it's an exponential function. Okay? And then what would the balance be for each of the six years uh, in the account if the account increased? by a constant rate of 12 each year. So they want you to change the constant rate of 12 for each year. N so they actually want you to change the rate to $12 each year. Okay, Constant rate, not by doing exponential. They want you to say he started with $100, he started with $100, and then they want you to go ahead and add Oops, sorry, I made an ugly table over here. They want you 12, just add $12 each year. So that would be 112, and then you add $12 more, you would get 124, and then you add $12 more, you would get 146, and then you keep going. Which one you make more money? By adding $12 each year, or by doing an exponential function? Which one do you think would make him more money? Okay, think about it. So I want you to finish that, and that should be your worksheet 5.3. Good luck with the rest of it, okay? Come and ask me for help.